Teresa Momber created a beautiful stamp set for the fall season called Country Roads. And although this stamp set is full of beautifully hand-drawn line art images, you don't have to color to create beautiful works of art. Today on Stamp TV, I'm going to show you how stamping line art images with plain color ink can create an elegant look for any card project. Let me show you the tools and products you're going to need for this project. First, you're going to need some cardstock, and I'm using the Gina K Designs Ivory cardstock. This is our layering weight cardstock. And then I also have some of the chocolate brown, the dark chocolate cardstock. And then I have a couple little pieces that I've cut too for the greeting. You're also going to need some ink, and I'm using the Memento Rich Cocoa ink. Now, I like the look of a brown ink stamped on ivory, but you may want to try this with a dark navy or a very deep green for a different look. Then I have two of the clear stamps from the new Country Roads stamp set. I have the little covered bridge, and then I have one of the greetings. I'm also going to add a little bit of color using background paper, and this is the Sunkissed Autumn Collection. We have a 6x6 pattern paper pack that has this particular pattern in it, which is so nice for a backdrop. And again, I'm using a little bit more of the dark chocolate. And then I have a panel of our new Dusty Sage. Now this is a layering weight cardstock, and I'm going to show you how you can make a layering weight cardstock look like a card base by attaching it to a heavy base weight piece of cardstock. So I'll show you that in just a minute. And then I'm using some of our jute ribbon. This jute ribbon came in the new Sunkissed Autumn Stamp TV kit. And there's always plenty of little pieces left over, so I grabbed some of this to use for this project. All right, to begin, I'm going to start by inking up this covered bridge image using some of the Memento Rich Cocoa ink. Now, it is a rather large image, so I like to stamp with the stamp on its back and ink up the whole thing so I can see it. And I'm going to stamp that right about there. There we go. So there's that covered bridge. I'm going to attach that covered bridge onto a piece of this dark chocolate cardstock. I made a little layer here. And if you're watching Stamp TV on our YouTube channel, you can visit StampTV.com. There, under each of the videos, we have all of the measurements and supplies used for each project. So you can get the measurements that I've cut all of these little panels down to. Okay, and then I'm going to stamp the Sending Happy Thoughts greeting onto this little piece of cardstock. I'm going to line that up. There. And then I'm going to attach that to a little panel of dark chocolate. Now because I stamped these in this nice rich cocoa color, you really don't need any coloring on here. These almost then appear like little works of sketched art that you might see at a craft fair or an art show. Okay, so now I'm going to add my patterned paper to the dark chocolate panel here. And line that up. Okay, I wanna do something a little bit fun with my ribbon. A little bit different, you know, lately I've been having some fun putting little pieces of ribbon here and there. I have so many scraps in my ribbon jars. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a little bit of tape to the back of this in two spots, right here and right here. So we'll add a little strip here and a little strip there. And then I'm going to stick one piece of jute ribbon there and another piece down here like that. Then I'm going to line up my focal image right into that upper right hand corner. So let me tape the back here and I do like to add a little bit of tape over the ribbon when I do these kinds of techniques with ribbon just to give it a little bit of extra stick power. And 
There we go. So there is my focal image. Now I'm going to add a little bit of tape onto the back in those same spots. And I'm going to fold those under. And that's just a fun way to give a little accent that's still flat. And it uses up all those nice little scraps of ribbon. Now I'm going to put my focal image down here in this corner and I'm going to kind of line it up so that I have about the same amount of margin at the bottom as I do at the top. So, get some tape on this. Find a little empty spot there by the bridge. And that's a fun little sketch that you can do with so many of your stamp sets. Now here I have an ivory card base and I've used the Gina K Designs heavy base weight cardstock for this and I've cut a panel that's a quarter sheet of cardstock that will fit right over the entire top of that ivory cardstock. So this way it's going to appear that I have a dusty sage card base even though I'm using a layering weight cardstock. I'm just kind of upholstering the top of a regular heavy base cardstock card base. All right. And I'm just going to line that up by pressing the two pieces together and kind of making sure that they're nice and straight. And there now I have my card base. And this is a really fun idea to do if you're using dark colors of cardstock like black or ivory, but you want the um, black or um, navy, but you want the inside of your card to be ivory and you don't want to add another layer. You can just do the color panel on the top and when you open it up it will be ivory or white on the inside. And then my final piece here is to take this whole panel and pop it right on top of my card base. And again, adding a little bit of extra tape over that ribbon to keep everything nice and secure. And so, there we have, boy that blends into the background there, doesn't it? There we have, let's see if I have a little piece of white cardstock that I can use just to, you can see the little bit of contrast there. Of course a little piece is missing but that's okay. So there you can see that is my finished card project. Try different ink and cardstock color combinations to create masculine or feminine cards. Or choose one colored pencil, one marker, or one watercolor paint color to add a touch of color on selected areas of the focal image for a different look.